The British Isles are both beautiful and rugged in equal measure. A land of breathtaking landscapes, from dramatic coastlines to rugged mountains. With its stunning beaches, wildlife populations and ancient monuments which offer a glimpse into our incredible history. Join us as we explore our British Isles, the places that call to our hearts and share a time of pure joy in our own lives. Join us on our adventures as we go into the wild. As someone who lives in County Durham, something I never take for granted is the fact that we live just a short drive away from the beautiful counties of Northumberland, North Yorkshire, or as today, over the Northern Pennines to Cumbria. Today I'm on my way to rendezvous with my two daughters, Sarah and Samantha, who have come to the end of a short break at Ambleside. Unfortunately, Sarah has to return to work, but Sam has a few more days off, so we have an opportunity to bag a few more Wayne rides. Ambleside, sitting at the north end of Windermere, is one of the most popular towns in the Lake District, and it's a great place to start some of the best known fell walks. Although we have both climbed Pavey Arc before, Sam hasn't done it via the Jack's Rake route, and I'm really excited for her as it's a spectacular grade one scramble up the rock face. For me, it's the most challenging scramble in the Langdales. Although the Langdale Pikes can be seen across Windermere, it's not until you approach Elterwater that they appear in all of their true glory, towering over 2,000 feet above the Great Langdale Valley. The highest point is Harrison Stickle at 736 metres, then Thunacar Knot at 723 metres, then Pike of Stickle, 709 metres, Pavey Arc stands at 700 metres, and Loft Crag is 682 metres. Unfortunately, the deeper you drive into the valley, the narrower the roads get. And there's only ever going to be one winner here. After some hot food at the old Dungeon Guile Hotel, we overnighted in Arnie in their car park. We then relocated early in the morning to the nearby National Trust Sticklegill Car Park. Fortunately, as members, it was free for us to park, otherwise it's £8.50 for a full day. After a hearty breakfast, we set off up the well-marked footpath to Stickle Tarn. The well-defined path basically follows Stickle Gill, and is sometimes referred to as Mill Gill, as it was used to power a fully mill which was built during the mid-15th century to clean and felt wool. The source of the gill is Stickle Tarn, which sits at the base of the climbing crag of Pavey Arc. Given the abundance of waterfalls and pools, the gill is an extremely popular scrambling and gorge walking location. And given my love for water, I couldn't resist the short scramble along its edge. Actually, if water falls to your thing, then make sure you stick to the end of this video, as you're in for a real treat.
For me, Stickelgill has to be one of the most beautiful mountain streams in the UK. If anyone knows any better cascades, I'd love to know where. Watch out for the Raven Pixie. Although quite steep, Stickle Tarn is a popular out and back walk and I'm really not surprised given the striking views across Great Langdale. The trail up to the tarn follows a well-defined path, but it has a couple of tricky sections, like this string crossing. Stickle Tarn, nestling below the stunning backdrop of Pier Viark and Harrison Stickle, is the high point for many, but not for us. Our next objective is the 700 metre summit of Pier Viark, and to get there we will be scrambling up Jack's Rake, which slices across the face of Pier Viark, going from the bottom right to the top left as you look at it. Glassed is a grade one scramble. It requires regular use of the arms to pull you up some of the steeper parts of the ascent. There are also several sections that are extremely exposed, so a head for heights is essential. An alternative scramble would be up Easy Gully, which splits off from the bottom right of the rake, but this can be slippy and is known for having loose rocks. As we set off to the rake, 
the peace and tranquility of Stickletown is shattered by the noise of a Coast Guard search and rescue Sikorsky S92. We later find out that this one is operating out of Humberside Airport. Through my binoculars I could see a gathering of people approximately halfway up the rig and it looks like the helicopter is positioning to undertake a winch rescue of a casualty. The downdraft must be incredible. For whatever reason, the helicopter leaves a few minutes later without undertaking the rescue. And if you look closely, you can see people on the summit watching all of the action. At the base of Jack's Rake, we are asked by members of the Langdale and Ambleside Mountain Rescue Team if we could keep clear of the rake until the rescue was undertaken, which of course we were more than happy to do. After nearly three hours, we are finally given permission to ascend, though some small bits of kit are still being recovered by the team. For those wondering, the casualty, although in some discomfort, was led to safety. This, what it's like now, is pretty much what it's like all the way up. Make sure on any tricky bits down you've got two really good hand grips before you pull yourself up. Coincidentally another father and daughter were also doing the scramble and as it was their first time they asked if they could follow us up the rake. Yeah, try go. Definitely keep the dry hand grips. Well done. All right. Okay. Strangely, I don't find this tiring, you know, because it's an easy pace. The route is marked by three mountain ash trees, which coincidentally mark difficult parts of the scramble. No, it's incredible. Smile beat. The third one. Is that the third one? It's the first one, isn't it? Oh, is it? That one. It's the only one we've passed. Oh, shit. 
Yeah, just get back in the gully if you can, Dan. A good little bit. Caribbean, yeah. Is that what it's for? Well, the guys have put it in for the rescue. How do people do it without it? <laughs> you have to, there's nothing to hold there. Blow the out here now. Seems new, like that's the only bit to hold. It's probably better the left side, to be honest. Yeah, boots aren't flexible enough, are they? <laughs> Right, over there. So that bit's hard, you have to use the metal bit. Well done, baby girl. Maybe for you two guys to come round there to the left, it's much, it's much easier. How did you get past this bit? Yeah, you're not. You know, there's no edge here, guys. It's it's the green grass. Definitely easier this way. It's more like steps and ladders coming up here compared to the gullies. <laughs> yeah, let's do Jake's, let's do Jack's rig in the rain. <laughs> The Langdale and Ambleside Mountain Rescue Team typically operate in the central part of the Lake District and having witnessed them in action today, it's clear they are all consummate professionals. And given that they are a self-funded dedicated team of professional volunteers, if you can support them then please do. I'll leave a link to their website in the comments. Guys, is that a textbook rescue fuse? Um, 
<laughs> we don't get them that often, but yeah, regularly. Thank you. Yeah, you've done a good job. We waited there for two hours, 50 minutes, because we've come all this way just to do this. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry to the Oh, God, no way. No worry. It's been entertained by the guys from Kendall down there. Yeah. They're a good bunch. There's a group of uh, four boy, four yeah. young men coming up after them. I can't remember that difficult, scary bit. I think this is my third time up there. Where he what? Well, you have to go back down. No, he didn't. He went up, but he just like really, really. Yeah. Another group climbing the rake at the same time are four young men, and two of which seem to be struggling in the lower sections. The two that have caught up to us are considering going back down to help them. Fortunately, they catch up and they all eventually make it to the top safely. Would be worse, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, if I didn't get caught there. That looks worse than it is. So this is the second rowan tree. That's uh, the worst one. Not the first one where, you know the guy, the, the couple who's in front. Oh, the rowan trees mark the the, bits. Yeah. They're actually very sacred and spiritual. And to keep away the evil spirits and forces. Interesting. 
Whether Ra and Ash, they're both rooted in mythology with having mystical properties, and I'm always unsure whether they are native Rowan or mountain ash. They call cowbells. Go and be <laughs> like a mountain goat. <laughs> I just need to hold on to it. Oh god, if my foot had slipped off there, that would have been terrific. <laughs> Good luck to getting your leg up to hide that. What are you saying? That was the worst. Take that. <laughs> Yeah, their friends have definitely bottled it, haven't they? Yeah. I forgot to say, as I'm filming our scramble up the rake with my GoPro, I apologise for the excessive camera movement, but please feel free to use the chapters to jump forward to the summit. Yeah, that was a bit tricky, wasn't it, that bit? That wasn't great. Can you remember that time we took us five hours to climb up Paviok? <laughs> <laughs> For us, yeah. but we stopped uh, yeah. to do the drone film. Even near the summit, the scramble continues to be tricky as a narrow gully gives way to more rounded slabs with fewer foot and hand grips. That what? Okay. Just up. Yes, my ears coming down.
We did it! 700 metres, top of Paper York. Incredible climb up Jack's Rick. Took us five hours. That's not our fault. It's because we held up by that mountain rescue team. But uh, what an incredible, exhilarating walk in. Wow, really, really pleased we've done it. A couple more peaks. We're going to do Harrison Stickle, Piker Stickle, and Th Thernacorn. Thernacorn, not. At 723 metres, Thunacar Knot is the highest point of the moorland rising behind Pavey Arc. It's a very undistinguished objective and completely unphotogenic. From Thunacar Knot, there is a direct route over the plateau to our next objective, Pike of Stickle. However, I wish we didn't take it as the ground here was really boggy following the recent rain. For those interested, the terms pike, knot and stickle are used to refer to the hills that make up the Lake District landscape. The word knot is a traditional Cumbrian translation for hill, while pike refers to a hill with a peaked summit. A stickle, like the one we're walking towards, is a hill with a steeper rocky outcrop at the top. From the summit of both Pike of Stickle and Loft Crag, the views down to the wilds of Mickleton and the surrounding high fells is truly incredible.
Our descent followed the path that runs to the left of the spectacular Dungeon Gill Gorge, which you can just about see here. Although Dungeon Gill's lore section is a popular atmospheric scramble, only a very few ever get to see the amazing cascades hidden in the higher section. So I'll just leave this here for you. Enjoy. <laughs> 